In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May grace and peace be with you all in the Holy Church of God. Be seated. First of all, how many how many people have the name Angel? Any angels here? You can stand up. And we have Father Angel, who is here too, Father Angel. Happy feast day. Happy feast day. And I thought all of you were angels because we belong to this parish under the advocation. So get up. <laughs> Happy feast day. This is it. I asked, oh, last year I was here. You didn't know that. I had confirmation and they gave me the address of this church. So when I came, everything was closed and there was nobody. <laughs> then I had to call the office and I was driving. <laughs> and thanks be to God, I wasn't stopped, but I saw they were stopping others. I prayed for them. <laughs> you know, Father Morgan, and of course, Father Emerson, he told me that the cost of the renovation is 4.5 million. Wow. And you know the good news? You only owe 700,000. <laughs> so once you finish paying 700, don't accept second collection. Oh, by the way, you cannot go out tonight without paying every cent of it. <laughs> so, congratulations. This is not only Father of course, is uh, the leader, the administrator, but without you, he couldn't make it. And really, it's, uh, it's a pleasure. That's my second blessing of an, oh, the third in the dance. So really, for me, it's, uh, it's a pleasure on this beautiful day. And also, we have Scott. Scott is here. Where's Dick and Scott? Where's Dick and Scott? Oh. He's, uh, 12 years ago, he became a Catholic on this day. On that day. Beloved brothers and sisters, we have gathered with joy to dedicate a new altar by celebrating the Lord's sacrifice. Let us join in this separate rite with fervent heart, listening to the word of God with faith and sharing joyfully at the Lord's table. Let us raise our hearts toward the blessed hope as we come together at one altar, we draw near to Christ, the living stone, with whom we grow into a holy temple. But first, let us humbly call upon God, that in his kindness, he may be pleased to bless this water he has created, with which we are to be sprinkled, as a sign of repentance and when we remembrance of baptism and by which the new altar will be purified. O oh God, whom every creature comes forth into the light of life, you accompany all people with such great love that not only 
do you nourish them with fatherly care, but you mercifully cleanse them of their sin with uh, the do of charity and constantly lead them back to Christ the head. For in your merciful plan, you establish that those who descend as sinners into the sacred waters to die with Christ should rise free from guilt and be made his members heirs with them to eternal reward. Sanctify therefore with your blessing this water you have created that sprinkled on us and on this new altar it may be it may be a sign of the cleansing waters of salvation in which we have been washed in Christ and made a temple of your spirit. When that with all our brothers and sisters who will celebrate the divine mysteries at the altar, we may come at last to the heavenly Jerusalem through Christ our Lord.
May God, the Father of mercies, to whom we dedicate this new altar on earth, grant us remission of sin and allow us to offer the sacrifice of faith for all eternity at this altar on time. Amen. Amen. The faithful you gathered as one, and we are shaped day by day through the outgoing of the Spirit, a people consecrated to yourself. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Isaiah says, 
Lord, who has believed what was heard from us? Thus faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Certainly they did, for their voice has gone forth to all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea, they were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother, John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. The Gospel of the But because a lot of young people 
people are working two jobs, they can they just ignore church. It's not because they don't want to go to church, because they have to work Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And they will school some of them in the week. So the pain of the bishop is not how many levels the bishop we see. It's to have to see which church they want to close. And it's very painful for communities, for priests and bishops. So we should say, thank you, God.
But, so I'm not going to bless you. Goodbye. <laughs> what? That's the sacrifice of the man. But what did that be also mean to follow the mother and follow the You see, whenever, so they're going to be here, okay? They're going to be here. They're going to be here forever. We're going to change them one day. That's the way it is in church. And yet they have, they have to obey like soldiers. Soldiers, what do they say? Yes, sir. So not because I'm going to change them because I want to. Because there's another community that needs their gift and all those who do this. So whenever they are behind that altar, this is not Father Morgan, neither Father Emerson. Who is there? Jesus. Jesus. So therefore, they do it in the Old Testament. What do they used to do on the altar? Burn animals for the sacrifice. And the priest will burn it and the smoke will go, the smell will go to God. Now, are they going to, to have chicken next Sunday? <laughs> Goat? Well, why not? Because, oh, by the way, the blood of the animal was to be sprinkled, like we did with holy water. They was, you know, the, the priest will do that. No, they don't have to do it. Neither priest has to do it because Jesus made the sacrifice he is the animal and also the offering. His offering. So therefore they represent Jesus to do the sacrifice. Yes? What is the other uh, the other the, the sign of the altar? What, what is it? The lamb of God, but what do we do on the altar? After the sacrifice. Eat. Eat, eat him. <laughs> so we have eat the banquet, the feast. So therefore, they represent Jesus to give you Jesus. So in a family, if there is no unity in the family, when you eat at the table, how do you feel? Bad, especially when they start criticizing you. So therefore, the priest is also, oh, you know the word priest, what it means? The one who built bridge between God and the people. They are bridges. <laughs> Not that the first San Francisco. They are bridge. We are bridge. So we have to bridge you one, with one another. We have to bridge you to make you connect with Jesus. What a responsibility we have as priests and bishops. Isn't it? It's difficult, isn't it? So how many wants to be with so Raise your hand. <laughs> you? Don't go afraid. Raise your hand. I know you. Very good. I know. So therefore, whenever a priest is on the altar, he's taking the person of Jesus. This is not him. Doing the sacrifice and at the same time, be the bridge and be the body of Christ.
Cada misa es lo que venimos a hacer, a celebrar nuestra fe, para recibir a Cristo y llevar a Cristo a otros. Y ojalá que vengan mucho más a buscar. Brothers and sisters, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, in order for us to profess that Jesus or confess that Jesus is Lord, it has to go through our mind. In order to confess it. So we have to learn through even the good news so that we, 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 may, we, have, we may confess, confess Jesus as our Savior. However, a lot of people think, and that's, the, that's, that's our great sin, especially in our country. We think religion is a matter of mind. If religion was the matter of mind, we would all be perfect. Amen? Especially us priests and bishops. We know so much. Oh, you know what? I never talk about myself. But the thesis that I did in the Vatican is to study all the churches in the world. And uh, the thesis is to study all the ethnic groups that are Catholic in this country, Irish, Polish. I studied all those communities in all the states. In a lot of things that we are experiencing now, people experienced it before. That's not the first time. Because we just don't learn history and we think everything is new. So therefore, if only the mind was the, tr the truth, we all be perfect in the state. There is no mind better than the state. Amen? Amen. The French can get judged. The Canadians can get judged. But the mind, the best mind you can find in the world that are here in the state. And yet we are so divided and we cannot live with one another. So therefore the mind to, to profess we need the body. But listen, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you believe in your heart, in your spirit. That's what is important, the spirit. Because we can be different, but if we have a loving spirit, we'll be able to communicate. Whenever we cannot communicate, something is wrong, not with the mind, but something wrong is wrong with the spirit. Amen? Amen. You're looking at me like if I have two heads. Isn't it true? Isn't it true? Isn't it true? Yes. Why? Because it's the word of God, not my word. For one believes with the heart and so justified, and one confess with the mouth and so is saved. So therefore, we have four legs. Being Christian is a process. A lot of people are confused. They think being Christian is to follow a religion. It's a way of life. First of all, we have to give the good news. And when I can, I walk in, I can feel there's good news. Because I see we are different, yet we are unified and we are one. Only the Spirit can do it. If I begin a discussion now between in politics, or if I start a discussion on culture, we'll be getting out of the church, fighting with one another. <laughs> but once we put that aside, we put the Spirit, we are in harmony. Amen? Amen. This is it. So, in the four steps or stages, 
of being a Christian, first of all, we have to receive the good news. Jesus died, Jesus died for us and is alive. The second stage is catechism. By the way, we want to do those three, the four steps in our diet. You know, I was with the bishop uh, this week, and the bishop of, of Wali, Bishop Zorama said, I have the best, the best diocese in the whole country. I said, after Charles. <laughs> So we can, we can be the best church when we live the good news and we bring happiness to us. The second is catechism, not only for children. You can see, I just told them sometimes adults we are fighting and we forget about these people that are behind us because in 50 years they might have to close this church like they closed in the north. So therefore, if we spend 4.5 million dollars, we have to make sure these young people and these, I mean these children and these young people will follow the faith and keep the faith alive. So we have no time to waste. So catechism, not only for children, for young people, catechism for adults. And then we want to celebrate our faith. You know, when it comes time, when we're going to give Jesus a lot of people won't be able to receive. So we hope that everyone will be able to receive Christ because we serve our faith. And finally, we go as missionaries. You know, when I first came away to Atlanta, they told me something very interesting. And I shared that with the, with the, with the Hispanics when they were complaining. They said, if when you were in Atlanta, when I was in Athens, but probably 10 years before I got there, a person will say, uh, will cross another one in, 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 in Georgia. They say, where are you from? Oh, I'm from New York, I'm from Chicago. Oh, you're a Yankee. <laughs> and they okay, yes, I'm a Yankee. Are you Protestant or are you Catholic? If the person would say he's a Catholic or she's a Catholic, they will walk away. Let, it, let them stand their hand hanging in there. You could imagine to be in a Bible belt and we becoming a Mary belt. Amen? Amen. You didn't get the Mary belt. The Virgin Mary belt. We become, we become the Eucharistic belt. Not because we don't like the others. It's because we believe in our church. We believe in Jesus Christ. And we want everyone else to have Jesus. If it were not for Jesus, I wouldn't be here. And I love so much what Jesus gave me in the church. That's what I want to share with others. We have our challenges, didn't we? And they, they have their challenges. But let's leave this church, not the building, not the altar, but the living church, we live a life for the next generation. Amen. Did you hear me? <laughs> Let us pray. Now, as I was, we were saying, what keeps us together is our faith. Not the faith that we think, but the faith that is Jesus himself the Holy Trinity. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, 
consensual to the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who from the Father and the Son is the God and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward for the church and the life of the world to come. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, let our prayers ascend to God, the Almighty Father, through Jesus Christ, to whom all the saints are drawn as sharers in his suffering and companions at his table. Let us kneel.
We glorify you, Lord, and we bless you. For in the ineffable sacrament of your love, you have decreed that the mystery of the altar should be brought to fulfillment in Christ, to whom all types and shadows give way. For Noah, a second father of the human race, once the flood has receded, set up an altar for you and offered a sacrifice which you, Father, accepted as a pleasing fragment, thereby renewing your covenant of love with the human race. Abraham, our father in faith, clinging to your word with all his heart, constructed an altar so that by not sparing Isaac, his beloved son, he might be pleasing to you. Moses too, the mediator, the mediator of the old law, built an altar which sprinkled with the blood of a lamb, would mystically prefigure the altar of the cross. All these Christ has fulfilled in the Paschal mystery, for by ascending the tree of the cross as priest and victim, he handed himself over to you, Father, as a pure oblation, so that the sins of the world, of the whole world, 
might be blotted out and a new eternal covenant be made with you. Let this altar be for us a sign of Christ. Let this altar be for us a sign of Christ. From whom peace, side flood, blood, and water, by which were established the sacrament of the church, let this be a festive table to which the guests of Christ hasten with joy, so that casting on your on you their cares and, and burdens, they may gain new strength of spirit for new path ahead. Let it be the place of intimate communion with you and a place of peace, where those who feed on the body and the blood of your Son may be filled with his spirit and grow in your love. Let it be the source of church's unity and of fraternal harmony, where your faithful gathering as one may drink of the spirit of mutual charity. Let it be the center of our praise and thanksgiving until we come jubilant to the eternal dwellings where we are to offer you the sacrifice of ordaining praise with Christ, the high priest and living altar. Who lives and reign with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
altar, which by our ministry we anoint, so that as a visible sign it may express the mystery of Christ who offered himself to the Father for the life of the world. Let our prayer rise, O Lord, like incense in your light, in your sight, and as this house is filled with a pleasing fragrance, so let your church be fragrant with the aroma of Christ.
the light of Christ shine upon the table of this altar and may those who share the Lord's Supper shine with this light. Oren, hermanos, para que ese sacrificio mío de ustedes sea agradable a Dios, Padre Todopoderoso. May your Holy Spirit come down upon this altar, we pray, O Lord our God, to sanctify the gifts of your people and graciously to cleanse the hearts of all who receive them. 
through Christ our Lord. El Señor esté con ustedes. Levantemos el corazón. Dimos gracias al Señor nuestro Dios. It is fully right in Jaws, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, having become both the true priest and the true oblation, he has taught us to celebrate forever the memorial of the sacrifice that he himself offered to you on the altar of the cross. Therefore, Lord, your people have raised the altar, which we dedicate to you with joyful praise. Truly, this is an exalted place where the sacrifice of Christ is ever offered in mystery, where the perfect praise is rendered to you and redemption flows forth from, for us. Here it is here is prepared the table of the Lord, where your children, fed by the body of Christ, are gathered into the one, the Holy Church. Hear the faithful drink of your spirit from the stream that flows from Christ, the spiritual rock, through whom they too become a holy oblation, a living altar. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we proclaim. of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have offered to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this mystery. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Del mismo modo, acaba de la cena. Tomó el cáliz dando gracias, se bendijo y lo pasó a sus discípulos diciendo, Tomen y beban todos de él, porque ese es el cáliz de mi sangre, sangre de la alianza nueva y eterna, que será derramada por ustedes y por muchos para el perdón de los 
pecados, hagan esto en conmemoración mía. passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Andrew, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing power. May the sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Please, in the name of the church, the good church of America. Your servant, Francis our Pope, God, our Bishop, your own Bishop of all the Church, in the time of the Catholic Church. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family who you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you in their passing from this life, give kind of it to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. there is a direct connection between earth and heaven. As we have at the altar here, Jesus is the perfect altar that unites us in love. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, and say it in your own language. Diga esta oración con el idioma que tú lo has aprendido. No te preocupes. Te conozco, te conozco. 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 Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. We shall seek great peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Keep us, O Lord, ever close to your altar, where the sacrament of sacrifice is celebrated, so that united in faith and charity, we, who by Christ are nourished into his, in Christ, into Christ, may be transformed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated, just for a moment. Well, I, I hope you like it. Right. <laughs> People have asked me very much in the past few days whether and how, how whether I was pleased or not. And I have to say that I was enormously pleased with the way that uh, everything has come together. Uh, trying to conceive of it uh, in your mind is one thing, but then seeing the reality of it, uh, it was, it's more beautiful and moving than I, than I had imagined. So, uh, a few quick words of thanks. Uh, first, we say thank you to our Bishop Jock, who has been with us tonight. To that will take hold and root in the hearts of uh, all of those young people, especially, that we, that we are speaking to and encouraging. Uh, also, thank you to our, our Bishop Emeritus, Bishop Julio Mone, who gave the, the green light for this project, who uh, approved of it, and all of those who worked it, uh, on it at the diocese, uh, Monsignor Rick, Richard Harris, Kelly Bruce, most especially. Uh, I wanted to say thank you to all of our staff members who have worked so hard, especially in the past year, as we have been celebrating our Masses over at the gym, uh, but especially to Madeline Ellswick, who is here, and uh, to Clark Slowecki. Uh, <laughs> the, the, demand, the demands of, uh, of a renovation and all of the work that goes into that really uh, cause them to have to to find another gear in terms of uh, performance, and, and they both did. So I thank, and I thank them and all of our staff very much. Uh, we have with us tonight uh, the architects uh, from Cram and Ferguson, uh, Ethan Anthony, Matthew Alderman, and uh, Kevin Hogan, who are right here in front row. Uh, <laughs> many people have asked me, they asked me if, that, if I liked it, and like, well, did you think of it? Was it your idea? And I have to say, no, it was, it was these men. Uh, they did. And also, uh, Candace Murphy, who is uh, a, the stencil artist who did a lot of the work uh, here in, in our niches. So it's the work of, of artists and artisans who, who create beauty, uh, and which is one of the great transcendent realities that orders us to God. It comes from God and leads us back to God. And so without our artists, Without beauty, uh, we would be lost and trapped in this fallen world. So we should all offer thanks to those who help us to manifest it and to, to call it forth in our churches. Uh, there are so many to thank. I thank all of my, my other priests who joined me here tonight. Uh, we, we have, of course, Father Emerson, uh, parochial vicar here at St. Andrews. Father Arthur Fitzmar from St. Anne's in the Ministry, Father Oscar from uh, St. James in Conway, uh, Father Bernard West from Sacred Heart in uh, Charleston, and uh, Father Andrew Trapp from St. Uh, Peter's in Beaufort, um, Paul McNeil, Father Paul McNeil from Precious Blood, many of you will know him. So uh, thank you, brothers, for joining us here for this uh, most sacred occasion. To our, to our deacons too, we say thank you, and to all of our altar servers and our and our choir members. Uh, this this night would not have been this joyful uh, experience without your help, your your contribution to our worship. And uh, finally, yes. And 
finally, simply a word of thanks to all of our Christians, to everyone here at St. Andrews. It's this, the, the work of maintaining our parish, of preaching the gospel, of spreading it, of maintaining our parish, of doing the hard work of maintaining buildings and doing renovations, all of that is, it's not possible without your commitment, without your prayers, without your perseverance and patience, uh, as your pastor sort of stumbles his way in the dark trying to figure out how, to, how best to do such a thing, and, uh, and your contributions, your sacrifices. That's the only way that we're able to, to have our family here. And so thank you so much again for all, all that you have done to make your make this a corner of the vineyard where we are seeing true fruit uh, coming to be. So thank you very much and God bless you. There's one person missing, right? Thank you to Father Morgan. <laughs> Your victory, you couldn't do it right by yourself. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Are you in a hurry to go home? No, I'm not. You have to work tomorrow, right? Uh, tomorrow, I have to travel five hours tomorrow, uh, five o'clock. So. Uh, last thing before we go, do we have any refreshments afterward? Yes. Uh, oh, you didn't say anything about it? Yes, you want to have it by yourself with your priest, right? <laughs> so go ahead, Father. Invite, invite the community. <laughs> Tell them. They know? They know? What I'm pretty book? sure that there's a dinner at the community life center afterwards, so please, please stop by. Right? <laughs> last. All the parents that, that have infants with them, come forward. All the parents, men and women, that have their infants in their hands. One day I say infant, they brought me one three-year-old and he was kind of heavy. Let me reveal a secret. You know, us who are old from afar, those who are not born here, at least myself, the first thing I learned about the beauty of the American culture and tradition is never to think about yourself or your generation, but think how to build it for the next generation. That's true, America to think about the future generation, not only us. At least in my country, we think about ourselves. And this is why we destroy it. But here always, what can we do to do it better for the next generation? So this is the next generation. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, there's another one coming. There's another one coming? Oh, okay. <laughs> How many do you have? Just one? Or oh, right now? How many are you going to have? As many as you can. So have six, please. Six. Don't go, Daddy. Don't worry about it. For the women used to care, now it's the men that care.
Miss Heaven. The Lord be with you. May God who adorns you with a royal priesthood, when that as you exercise in its holiness, you may share worthily in the sacrifice of Christ. Amen. And may he who gathers you at one table and renews you with one bread, may make of you one heart and one soul. Amen. By the example of your love, may you draw to Christ those to whom to proclaim him. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be.